This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Friday, the 19th day of May in the year 2023. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting and here's what we're tracking tonight, some breaking news. Convicted mass killer and death row inmate Mark Royden Durant, also known as Mark Williams and Smalley, made a daring escape from the Mazaruni jail this afternoon under the guard of a boatload of heavily armed gunmen suspected to be members of a Venezuelan gang. In a statement, the Ministry of Home Affairs said the inmate was being escorted back to his cell after a visit with someone when heavily armed gunmen attacked the prison facility, forcing prison guards to dash for cover while the inmate escaped in the company of those gunmen. The Home Affairs Ministry said the gunmen were armed with AK-47 automatic rifles. Prison guards returned fire, but were no match for the gang of gunmen. The statement said the boat and its occupants proceeded upstream past its Bali landing while prison guards and police in support undertook pursuit. Members of the Joint Services have since been mobilized to effect the recapture of Williams and to capture and arrest his accomplices. An investigation is underway and persons are being questioned in relation to the extremely serious incident. Williams was convicted of murder stemming from the Bartica massacre in 2008, when along with other gunmen he ambushed and killed 12 persons, including three policemen. He was also convicted and sentenced to death over the killing of Ghana Defense Force member Corporal Ivor Williams. He previously escaped from the Cam Street Jail in July of 2017, but was recaptured in October of that same year. The Ministry of Home Affairs said the Joint Services and other security personnel are on high alert. All citizens in the Mazaruni and surrounding areas are advised to take precautions and remain vigilant, as persons being sought are armed and extremely dangerous. Meanwhile, in a statement, opposition spokesperson and security Gita Chandon Edmonds said given Ghana's history, the escape is not a situation to be taken lightly. She said many may recall the incidents that followed the 2005 jailbreak. According to the opposition spokesperson, the Ministry of Home Affairs must explain how the incident occurred and provide the nation with regular updates. She said no effort should be spared in ensuring that the escapee is recaptured. More news in a moment. It's been a long time coming. Overdue, some might say. But now that it's here, it will change life forever. And it is here to stay. The future is now. Transforming Guyana into the 21st century. Introducing GTT Fiber. Experience internet connectivity like never before. Speeds you deserve at prices you can afford from a name you can trust. Sign up today. GTT Fiber is here. GTT. Together, we rise faster. Oh my lord. I just love to shop in this store. My customers them gonna love all these things. So many different things in one place. Household items, electronics, toys, stationery, confectionery, exercise equipment, shoes and clothes for men, women and children, school things, costume, jewelry, perfume, makeup. Oh, look the makeup. Giftland <laughs> Office Max, Guyana's favorite department store. We're full of flavors. Tell your neighbors about the Buster flavor flavors. Grab a Buster flavor flavor flavors. Yeah, taste Buster. Grab a Buster. Buster flavor tastes the savor. Buster. Buster flavor flavors. Buster. Buster flavor flavors. Standing by your side Golden service Half a century and more New India assurance Our policies are secure From the heart of India 
Exxon Mobil Guyana is projecting that it could lose more than 350 million US dollars in revenues monthly if the High Court's ruling against the Environmental Protection Agency and the Esso Exploration and Production Company is upheld, and the company is forced to shut down its Lisa Phase 1 development project if unable to secure an unlimited parent company guarantee agreement as ordered by the court. Earlier this month, the High Court ordered the EPA to direct the oil company to provide the unlimited liability parent company guarantee within 30 days or face suspension. Both the EPA and the oil company have moved to the Court of Appeal to challenge that decision. However, an application for the ruling to be stayed pending the hearing and determination of the appeal was rejected. The appellate court is set to hear the case on the 29th of May. Today, while addressing the press at Exxon's Duke Street head office, the president of Exxon Mobil Guyana, Alastair Rutledge, said both Guyana and Exxon Mobil could lose big if the High Court's order is upheld. We don't know whether we will be able to secure those. That is a question. Um, but that is something we're pursuing just now in case that that order is maintained. But we have we filed uh, an application for that order to be stayed because we believe if we're unable to secure the as as ordered those unlimited guarantees then obviously the the permit is suspended per that order and then we would have to stop production on the Lisa Lisa phase one facility which then has significant financial implications for all of the investors but also for obviously the, the country in, in the sense of revenues that will be lost so very substantive. He also said in April the company and the EPA finalized the parent guarantee of two billion US dollars to complement the six hundred million US dollars insurance policies for Lisa Phase One development project, and remains committed to that arrangement. However, he said the company will be guided by the rulings of the court. Um, the order the judge issued required an unlimited guarantee. We have aligned with the, the EPA on a one that has the $2 billion value. But if we have to, what we are working on is, is seeing whether we can secure such a, a guarantee from our um, affiliated companies or parent companies. Mr. Rutledge said currently the company is uncertain whether it will be able to secure unlimited guarantee, but it is currently exploring the various options with the affiliate companies, even as it awaits the decision of the Court of Appeal. No, our, our agreement it remains with the EPA. We did a lot of work with them, with international experts, to come up with that credible uh, valuation. Um, and so we agreed to the wording and we agreed to the value. And that is the basis on which we're securing uh, those those assurances currently. So we're, we're working both. We're making sure that we have those assurances ready should the order be stayed, but should the order be held and that we're obliged to provide unlimited, we're also pursuing those or trying to secure those. But as I say, we don't know whether we can. It's not, you know, that is part of our corporate decision-making process, ExxonMobil, Hess, you know, it is not a local affiliate decision. Rotlich told reporters that the Exxon Mobil company and its co-venturers have rigid systems in place to prevent or to mitigate an oil spill during its operations on the Stabrook Block offshore Guyana. He also said should a spill occur, the company has the requisite systems in place and financial resources to conduct cleanup exercises. Convinced that Guyanese will cash in big should the Ghana Marriott Hotel be sold, Vice President Barra Jagdio on Thursday said the government is currently evaluating the bids submitted by prospective buyers for the hotel. The hotel attracted two prospective buyers after a second bidding round was opened. The highest bid received was 90 million US dollars. Now we have to analyze all of those bids and their various components, but the fact is that people are prepared to pay, raise their bids from $65 million to $90 million, right? That's a fact. While speaking at his party's press conference, Mr. Jagdeo said the bidders were provided with all the relevant information about the hotel, including the financial details and its performance over the years. As I explained there, there are various forms of valuation. You can look at a profit, but you can look at the value of the asset, etc. And clearly people see in Marriott a great value and we are going to earn as a country 
tens of millions of dollars more than we spent on building it and that money will come into the treasury to do other things for the people of this country. They should be happy. During the first round of bidding, six companies submitted bids for the hotel ranging from 25 million US dollars to 65 million US dollars. An American businessman who has indicated an interest in housing development in Ghana topped the bidding war with his 65 million US dollar bid. Dissatisfied with those bids submitted, the government reopened the bidding process. And that same American businessman is once again the highest bidder with his 90 million US dollar bid. The other bidder came in at 86.1 million US dollars. Help me out with this thing, man. You just know everything. What's all this talk about local government elections? Local government refers to the mayor and councillors who manage the affairs of our towns, like Georgetown, and the chairman and councillors of the Neighborhood Democratic Council. Oh, but why is that important to me? Dolly, it is very important. Every day, Local government officials make decisions that affect you, your family, and the community. They serve the people within the community in which they were elected. Oh, Miss Anne, me not understand all them big words you use there. Tell me what local government does do. All right, darling. Local government is responsible for maintaining and protecting public property, like our community centers and the playgrounds for collecting the garbage, maintenance of the streets, cleaning of the drains and the carpets, and so much more. Oh, I now understand. Thanks, Miss Anne. You're welcome. I'm going to show off for my friends them why I will vote at the local government elections. That's a good thing. Let's go. Monday, June 12, 2023 is Local Government Elections Day. For further information, contact GCOM or visit the GCOM website at www.gcom.org.gy. The president of Exxon Mobil Ghana, Alastair Rutledge, today said plans are on stream to have the Prosperity FPSO commence operations later this year as part of the Payara Field Development Project in the Stabrook Block offshore Guyana. The FPSO arrived in the country in April and is projected to produce up to 220,000 barrels of oil per day. We are on track to start that project up uh, by the end of this year which will then bring our combined capacity for production to uh, over 600,000 barrels per day. Before. The Exxon boss, the Lisa Destiny and the Lisa Unity FPSOs are performing well. Delighted to say that the first two projects, Lisa Phase 1 and 2, the Destiny and Unity FPSOs are operating very well. Uh, in fact, in the first quarter of this year, they were able to deliver an average production of 375,000 barrels per day and have been able to demonstrate rates of 400,000 barrels per day combined. He also said as the company pumps oil offshore Guyana, the country and more, so the people are reaping the benefits. In 2022, the company and its partners injected more than $80 billion into the local economy, directly benefiting 1,500 businesses. With more developments on stream, Mr. Rotledge said the benefits are expected to increase. Already, he noted more than 5,000 Guyanese are working in the petroleum sector. It's, I think, important to the country that we continue this trend of investment uh, because it secures and underpins all the activity that's going with it. Among the development projects in the pipeline is the Whiptail project. The Exxon boss said that the company has committed to submit a field development plan and already has started the process for the environmental permit. Just recently, the government approved the URU project, the fifth offshore development 
project in Guyana. Leader of the Alliance for Change, Kemal Ram Jatan, today slammed the government for what he termed the unwarranted attacks on the local judiciary by the Attorney General Anil Nandlal and the Vice President Bharat Jagdeo. Mr. Ram Jatan's comments come in light of skating attacks on Magistrate Lerone Daly, who earlier this week dismissed the case against the former Finance Minister Winston Jordan. Ram Jatan went further to say that he believes the attacks against Daly by top government officials is to give an indication to the Director of Public Prosecutions to review the ruling of the court. Jack Dale nor the Attorney General cannot appeal this ruling. They know this. But what their noises obviously seek to do is to attempt to influence the DPP to be pressed into upturning this ruling of her worship. That is disastrous for Ghana. Mr. Ramjatan, who was speaking during the AFC Weekly Press Conference, said the attacks by the government on the judiciary, especially on the rulings that are not in its favor, are tanked among to bullying the judiciary. Such conduct is uncivil, insensitive, and with the intent to make justice officials look over their shoulders as to how the executive branch thinks about their findings and rulings. This is disastrous for institutional democracy, judicial independence, and justice. The AFC leader observed that the DPP is the only authority that can constructively criticize the magistrate's ruling, but has chosen not to do so. He said the ruling of the magistrate to dismiss the case against Mr. Jordan is in keeping with the law. Hi, Mr. Smart. Please stop a minute and just clarify this thing for me. Oh, Sonel, don't tell me it's local government questions again. Yeah, boss. <laughs> How come the local government elections different from the general elections? Okay, the local government election systems allow for half of the members of the council to be elected through the proportional representation system, just like general elections. And the other half will be elected through the first past the post system. This system allows for one candidate to be elected to represent the constituency where he or she lives. For example, if a council got 30 seats, like the Georgetown municipality, 15 will be elected through the proportional representation system and the other 15 will be elected through the first past the post system given a total of 30 councillors. So that means that every constituency will have one of its citizens who live there having a seat and representing it at council? Yes, Sunil, that's correct. And if you need to know anything else about the electoral system for local government elections, just call G, come. <laughs> Take care, Sunil. All right. Monday, June 12, 2023 is Local Government Elections Day. For further information, contact GCOM or visit the GCOM website at www.gcom.org.gy. Food Max Supermarket, located on the ground floor at the Giftland Mall, is your one-stop shop for all your grocery needs. We stock a variety of imported frozen meat and food products, fresh produce and pet supplies, freshly made bread, rotisserie chicken and patties are also available daily. Shop in comfort today at Food Max and let our courteous staff assist you in satisfying your shopping needs. Food Max, the fresh food specialist. It's one of your biggest goals, getting your own home, where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true. Or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. Look who's in the mix now. The new Busta Soda Water. Zero calories. Zero sugar. Zero artificial flavors. 100% refreshing. Taste Busta Soda Water today. Busta Soda Water. Now available for only $120. Gaios, 
Ford's Super 95 gasoline gives you more reasons to drive and is available at 56 service stations nationwide. For affordable price, high performance and high mileage, choose Guile's Super 95 gasoline. Across the region tonight, Brazil's Supreme Court has voted to convict former President Fernando Collar de Mello on corruption and money laundering charges. Six of the court's ten judges voted to convict the 73-year-old who was impeached in 1992 on corruption charges. While yesterday's vote meant his conviction was certain, the remaining four judges will vote on Wednesday when the session resumes. At that time, the justices will also decide on the former president's sentence, which could include jail time. The latest charges against Kolar are an outgrowth of the so-called car wash probe, which sent dozens of politicians and business leaders to jail, including several former presidents. The Brazilian prosecutor's office accused the former president of having received over six million U.S. dollars in bribes. The Caribbean Examination Council has identified that the examination breach for the mathematics examinations took place in Jamaica. Speaking to regional media this afternoon, the registrar and CEO of CXC, Dr. Wayne Wesley, confirmed the leak of the 2023 Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate Mathematics Paper 2. He acknowledged that the fiasco was of great concern as the paper was distributed across the region. However, investigations have identified the examination center where the leak occurred, but CXC has not named the individual involved. The regional examination body has decided that the grading of the CSEC mathematics paper will be based on multiple choice examination paper 1 and the school-based assessment or paper 3, the alternative SBA. Dr. Wesley said the news of the security breach of the examination has caused much anxiety and concern and as a result of the breach and the compromise of the exam as well as consideration for the mental health and well-being of the candidates and timely release of results, CXC has determined that grades for the exam will be awarded using the modified approach. And finally, tonight international news. The BBC reports that the U.S. says it will support providing advanced fighter jets, including U.S.-made F-16s, to Ukraine and also back training Ukrainian pilots to fly them. A senior White House official said President Joe Biden told the G7 leaders in Japan of his government's decision. President Vladimir Zelensky of Ukraine, who has requested fighter jets for months, said that the decision by the U.S. would greatly enhance his army in the sky. U.S. approval for the scheme means other nations can export their F-16s. And that's your news source evening bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting and encouraging you to stay safe.